Neil deGrasse Tyson is an astrophysicist with the American Museum of Natural History and the director of the Hayden Planetarium here in New York. Hey, Neil, good to see you. Yeah, great. How Happy big a deal? Oh, it's, well, first, it's my personal favorite planet, so I think it's a, <laughs> so it's you're a happy big about deal. This. And you must think it's a big deal because you're devoting time to this story. But uh, to take a space uh, a, a, a spaceship, a space uh, experiment, and put it into or orbit around another planet, what's good about that is all previous ones just f were flybys. Right. You take 10 years to get there, take a quick picture, and you're gone. Here, we get to hang out there for well, four well, years. I'm still shaking my head over the fact the rings are made, a, made up of chunks of ice and rock, and this spacecraft picks its way through there. Well, no, if Found a, I found a gap in the rain to get through. <laughs> to come I found a gap there. on your tie, apparently, also. <laughs> so what exactly are we going to be studying now? What are we going to be looking for? Think of this as a new home you just moved into, and you don't know the neighborhood yet, you don't know the backyard, you don't know the rivers, the trees. It's going to be an exploration of all of the physical conditions of that environment, not only of the Saturn environment, but the environment of half a dozen moons as well. Yeah, there are 31 moons of Saturn. Yeah, I think it, Titan it, is one of the largest. You can't look at all of the moons. That's right. too many. But so how do you pick and choose? It's, you pick the ones that are kind of cool and kind of kind of peculiar. Uh, one of them we just flew by, Phoebe, is a moon that's orbiting retrograde, opposite all of the other moons. And we think it's icy, and we think it was a captured comet from the region where Pluto hangs out in the outer solar system. We're talking about this happening 930-something million miles away from Earth. A billion miles. Right, at a cost of 3.3 billion dollars risk reward is it worth the money well it's three billion over the length of the mission so you okay. divide that into a year americans spend more on lip balm all right but based on what we might learn okay. is it worth three billion dollars at this particular time thanks for the lip balm analogy i appreciate that um uh, first of all i think in context I think we should even be spending more to understand our, our neighborhood. It's this neighborhood in which Earth is embedded. We're not an island here. We're part of an interacting system of comets and asteroids and radiation fields. And, and what we learn about the rest of the planets tells us all kinds of things about what our past and what our future might be. Real quickly, we've got the Mars rover. We've got this Saturn mission. We've got this X Prize, where private companies are trying to get reusable spacecraft yeah, into yeah. orbit. Are you seeing a kind of a renewed interest in exploration? Yes, because I think after the Columbia tragedy, we had to rethink our focus. We had to reassess what are we doing in space? Do we have a place to go? Do we have, do we have a, a mission statement that we want to honor? Uh, and uh, in America, space exploration is, is part of what identifies us as a nation. It's in our culture. It's, look at how much ownership people took when the, the news that we might have to turn off Hubble. People screamed out. And they told me that, that, that NASA didn't own Hubble. Astrophysicists don't own Hubble. The public owned Hubble. So, and by the way, the Hubble took images of the planet, of the, of the, Saturn system that informed some of the follow-up observations that could be made by Cassini. By the way, Hubble also cost a lot of lip balm. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson, sure. thanks very much. All right. Good to have Pleasure you here.